Hi, I'm Matthias Carsten from RME, and today I want to talk about Steady Clock FS. Steady Clock has been introduced in uh, 2002 in the 8648. That was a MADI to ADAT converter. And uh, there had been a technical reason to uh, develop this kind of uh, clocking. Um, the MADI input signal uh, usually is too jittery to extract a clock out of it. And um, that's why some units at that time had a, an additional word clock uh, line running in parallel to the MADI signal. Uh, but this is of course uh, cumbersome and this, this uh, defeats the purpose of the MADI a little bit. So it's more nice to extract the clock directly out of MADI. So for technical reasons, the MADI clock that you extract directly from the MADI signal has a jitter of 80 nanoseconds. And 80 is a lot in the audio world. So for example, if you have a very long AS line, like 100 meters, you might end up with 10 to 20 nanoseconds of jitter, which is already a lot too. Uh, for normal connections between, let's say, something with a digital output and into your DAC at home, you end up with about one to maximum five nanoseconds. Um, that is okay and usually not a big problem. So, uh, a steady clock uh, was developed to, to clean this 80 nanoseconds of jitter down to a value that is one nanoseconds or below, so that uh, you can use that clock uh, for all its uh, typical intended purposes. So in 2003, just one year later, we added Steady Clock to the PCI card HDSP9632. And from then on, we put Steady Clock into any of our products. And that makes a lot of sense because you want to have a clean clock and you want to have it in any case. It doesn't matter where your clock signal comes from. It can be digital like AEC view or SPDIF coaxial or XPDIF uh, optical or whatever. You want to have a clean clock and uh, in digital audio you have to synchronize your devices with each other. So you cannot use internal clocks all the way. Only one device can have its internal clock running which is usually quite clean. And for the others you need the external clock and then you want to clean that clock that you get from all this jitter. So uh, the Steady Clock FS is a newer development that I will explain later over there when we change to the other workplace. Uh, let me just show the normal Steady Clock functionality here on a small example on a test setup. We have an audio position APX555B over there that uh, generates a, a square, like a word clock signal with 48 kilohertz, and it has uh, applied a, a sine jitter of 2.5 kilohertz. Uh, with an amount of uh, 50 nanoseconds. And uh, this word clock signal is fed into a UFX plus. Uh, you can see this signal here on the first channel on the oscilloscope. Peak to peak, these are now 100 nanoseconds of jitter. And uh, the UFX plus clocks on this jittery signal, the steady clock, uh, processes this clock signal and cleans it up. And the result is what you see down here. This is the output of the UFX plus. Uh, all the jitter is gone. Now the point is that of course this clock cleaning is not only done for the digital output. This clock signal is used for everything inside the unit. That means AD conversion, DA conversion, all the digital outputs, everything is run with that one. So you may ask what is the problem with jitter? Well that's easy. Uh, a jittery signal is like a, a signal that is not steady but we're doing strange things up and down, <laughs> so to say. And um, uh, what happens then is that with higher amounts of jitter, you get uh, compatibility problems. That means uh, your SPDIF or AS input might not lock anymore, might not be stable, uh, drops the sync or something like that. And if you use this kind of clock for DA conversion, it's even worse because the DA converter reacts di directly on it. What you can get is some kind of sidebands to the pure original signal. Uh, you can get a modulated noise floor, or you can just get more noise at all. Things like that. So that's why you really want to avoid too much jitter. The jitter that we saw on the digital storage oscilloscope is so-called interface jitter. The jitter that happens on the uh, digital interface path. That means from ASEVU output to input or from SPDIF output to input. This kind of jitter is not very critical 
So if you hear about values between 1 and 5 nanoseconds, it's not a problem. This might sound astonishing because usually you hear about jitter values in the picosecond area or maybe even lower with femtosecond. This kind of jitter is typically sampling jitter. That means the jitter that happens within the AD and DA conversion and which can directly influence the audio quality. So I will show now how this kind of jitter affects the ADDA conversion. We will have the APX555B using a test jitter signal, uh, feeding this into three different ducts, one with uh, steady clock, one with steady clock FS, and one without anything, just the normal SPDIF receivership which clocks then the DA converter, which is quite usual and popular. Um, and uh, we will show on the screen here the different results that you get and how much audio is affected by it. This is the user interface of the audio position system. And it's now configured in a way that it's very easy to show jitter uh, effects on DA conversion. For this, uh, just as explanation, on the left side here we have the input output section. It's now configured to digital optical output, 48 kilohertz, which runs into the DAC. Below there is the input configuration. We use the XLR balanced lines right now. And uh, here is the generator that uh, produces the 10 kilohertz uh, sign signal, which you can already see here in the FFT. And uh, on a, an additional page here, we can uh, set up the uh, jitter effects. So right now we have the jitter chosen as a sign of 2.5 kilohertz. And right here, you can adjust the amount of jitter that you want to apply. The nice thing about this kind of jitter measurement is that the 2.5 kHz modulation, the jitter itself, will be visible inside the FFT as 12.5 kHz and 7.5 kHz signal. Basically mirrored to the 10 kHz signal, so easy to read and easy to see. And that's what we will do now with three different ducts. I prepared some measurements to show the effects of jitter on the analog output of the DA conversion. And I would like to start with a unit that does not have any active jitter reduction within the audio band. Interestingly, this unit uses an AKM4490 ship, the same duct ship that is in built into the ADI2 duct. Now, if you have a little bit experience with this kind of FFT measurements, you will notice that here, where we see a nearly full-scale 10 kHz sign, the noise floor, shown at minus 130 dB, is too high. If you compare this to an ADI2 duct measurement, then you will see the noise floor there is at about minus 155, using the same duct ship. So this noise might either be a bad hardware implementation on the analog output side or might already be a jitter artifact. Jitter can be sidebands, lots of kind of needles shown here, or noise modulations in any kind, even a broadband noise modulation is possible. So let's see what happens if we change the so far jitter-free input signal to one that has one nanoseconds of jitter on it. We immediately see the side bands, 2.5 kilohertz distance from the center one. And here the jitter modulated side bands reach a level on a, about minus 94 dB, which is about CD quality. This is with only one nanoseconds of jitter. Higher jitter values, of course, cause higher side bands. This is 10 nanoseconds, this is 20 nanoseconds, and finally 50 nanoseconds. Now we reach about minus 60 dB. What happens if we go down with the jitter? Let's say we have an ideal transmission. The interface jitter is quite low. So let's try with only 100 picoseconds. This is 100 picoseconds of jitter on the optical input, and even here you can see the side bands clearly out of the noise floor. They now reach a level of about minus 114 dB. So to show these effects on a steady clock device, I measured the Fireface UC. The Fireface UC has an older 
uh, ADDA converter in it as the modern units. So basically it's not on a level with an AK4490, but you can see here that the UC still provides a lower noise floor. It has a better analog implementation and clock implementation than the other unit that uses uh, the latest AK4490 chip. So let's now apply some jitter to the optical input signal of the Fireface UC. And I just did one measurement because that is enough to show it's 20 nanoseconds of jitter. And you can see the sidebands again. They are at about minus 119 dB. Now compare this to a unit that doesn't have steady clock. 20 nanoseconds again. We had at that measurement about minus 68. So steady clock indeed reduces the jitter by not only 30 dB, like we advertise it, but a lot more. Now steady clock FS is advertised as having an even higher jitter reduction and also less self jitter. So let's see what the ADA2 duck does with all this. This is the jitter-free optical input signal for the ADI2 duck with a very low noise floor of about minus 155 in this measurement. And now let's apply a whopping 50 nanoseconds of digital jitter. Yes, there are no sidebands visible. This is 100 nanoseconds, still nothing visible. And this is a really ridiculously high 150 nanoseconds of jitter nothing. Conclusion? 